up, Gator Nation? Welcome to Rice Eccles Stadium. Zach Albaverde and Nick Del Torre here coming to you live from Salt Lake City, Utah. We just arrived here, got a tour of the press box, got to check out this stadium for the first time where the Gators and UTs will take this field on Thursday night, 8 p.m. on ESPN. Nick, we finally arrived, man. The season's here. What are your early impressions of this place? And this is what everyone wants to know. Altitude's all right. The altitude's all right. <laughs> it was plenty hot when we uh, walked up. Plenty hot when we walked up. I mean, a sweatshirt, that was a bad choice. Um, it's been fun to watch Zach. I mean, I grew up going to kind of Colorado skiing. I don't know if Zach's ever seen a mountain in his life. Zach has been loving this. I have, but this but is you, But if you can setup. get it, we have the kind of the shades down. But if you can see that, this is just a picturesque uh, backdrop for some college football. And it'll be the game of the night on Thursday and a, and a great way to start week one. It will. We'll have a bunch more coverage coming to you guys at Gators Online. We've had a ton of preview stories. We'll have more on Wednesday, uh, more videos coming to Gators Online YouTube channel. So make sure that you guys are sub subscribed. We will put out our official predictions on Wednesday and then we will do a video breaking down those picks. Um, but now we're going to do some storylines to watch for. We've kind of given our keys to the game. But I think now, uh, you know, some of the things that we're going to see on the ESPN bulletin board of, of what they're going to be watching for, I think all eyes to start are going to be on both quarterback situations for these teams. Graham Mertz making his UF debut, mm -hmm. and then who's going to start at quarterback for Utah. Coming in this facility and this stadium, Nick, we heard uh, one of the folks at the desk say they think Kane Rising's playing. So uh, a little, little different tune than what we heard from one of the beat writers. I don't know that uh, it's, I don't think it's Cam's decision. I don't think it's Kyle Whittingham's decision. Cam's a competitor. Cam's a football player. Yep. If the doctor gives him a green light, he's going as hard as he can go. <laughs> if the doctor tells Kyle Whittingham, hey, your quarterback can play. Hey, Cam, do you want to play? There's not really a conversation there. Sure. Maybe, maybe even a head nod, and that's it. <laughs> um, so I think it'll come down to the doctors, and if Cam's cleared, and if Cam's cleared, I think, then seven and a half months after knee surgery, what do you look like? How mm -hmm. effective can you be? You, I mean, you mentioned late in the game last year, came at a 26 yard run to extend a drive. He, run for, he ran for 91 yards against Florida last year. Um, in my opinion, he's a top 10, when healthy, Cam Rising is a top 10 quarterback in the entire country. Now, how healthy will he be, even if he's cleared on Thursday night? Yeah, and I think that all eyes are going to be on him pregame and what's he doing in warm-ups. Uh, I don't know when the official word will come from Kyle Whittingham, but he has basically described this as a game-time decision, and I think it'll go all the way up until kickoff before we find out. Um, if not, Bryson Barnes will uh, be the starter. This will be his second career start for Utah. If he does get the nod, he started last season against Washington State. He took over for a rising in the Rose Bowl. But I have to think, Nick, that if – that is how things play out, and that's a scenario that we see Florida's chances to win go up exponentially. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think Bryson Barnes is a former walk-on, a veteran, uh, knows the playbook, knows the system. Nate gives you such a dynamic running ability. Yeah. Um, one of the fastest quarterbacks Florida would face all year, and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see whether it's a wildcat or a full package for, for Nate uh, if you see two quarterbacks if Cam can't go. so. Uh, we asked Billy Napier, uh, we asked Jason Marshall, they're saying they're preparing for everyone. They're preparing yeah. for Zach Albaverde just in case <laughs> uh, late in the fourth quarter. Well, and we know Utah has been preparing for Graham Mertz. It's been pretty defined now for the past few weeks that he was going to be QB1 for the Gators, and now he makes his first official start in orange and blue, the 33rd of his career. This environment, Nick, and this crowd and this atmosphere is, I don't think, anything that's going to intimidate mm -hmm. him. Uh, but again, he is making his first start with a new team, first game of the season. Um, what are you going to be looking for from him specifically? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are some things that he has to do in this game or and not do for Florida to win? Let's start with not do. Uh, don't give the ball away. Yeah, uh, he's, had, he's had an issue turning the ball over, throwing interceptions. I think part of the reason why, not just his experience, and I think when I say Graham Mertz's maturity, I think he understands – who he is as a player. I think he yep. understands the offense and what his role inside the offense is. And I think as much as we both liked uh, Anthony Richardson, at times it was, hey, I could check down to the running back, we might have to punt, <laughs> or I could try to shake somebody and run 80 yards. And that's not Graham Mertz's game. So I think Graham Mertz understands, hey, sometimes throwing a ball away might be better than throwing an interception. Mm -hmm. We've got a really talented line. We've got really talented running backs. I don't need to be 
Superman. I think Graham Mertz understands his role inside the offense, and that's really, I think, what kind of separates him in, in terms of just his maturity as a veteran. Yeah, and we, I guess, based on the depth chart, uh, I would expect Max Brown is going to be the backup quarterback. Uh, if Jack Miller, who's listed as questionable in, in, for this game, is not able to go, um, you know, there was some... Uh, Old ball know, coach, yeah, dude. Yeah, man, he, he, he got some... Fans riled up this week when he uh, hyped up Michael Leon. So um, I, I guess I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, but again, for Ford, obviously you need Graham to be healthy, not have even a series where he goes out uh, and be able to play this whole game for Florida. Uh, one thing that we're all going to be watching is who's going to be snapping him the ball. Because uh, if it's Jake Slaughter, Nick, you're looking at a brand new offensive line, one through five. Mm -hmm. I mean, even Austin Barber, who is the only – Returning start, although he wasn't a full-time starter last year, he's going to left tackle, so he's at a brand new spot. Uh, you've got even uh, Micah Mazuka at a new spot now at right guard, Richie Leonard at left guard. They kind of swapped those two guys. You got a transfer, obviously, in uh, Damian George, and Kingsley was the lone returning full-time starter. 26 consecutive starts, has played in 40 yeah. games for the Gators. Uh, as veteran as you can get. That's like an Iron Man streak. Twenty-six straight starts on the offensive mm -hmm. line. It's an easy position. A, a running back gets tackled and rolls up on your ankle. Uh, you, you miss a game. You miss yeah. a month. Uh, so twenty-six straight games for Kingsley is, is crazy. very impressive. Um, everyone's talked highly of Jake Slaughter, but we haven't really seen him. So, sure. so I think it goes to me being like, okay, I can listen. I can trust the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. I can trust the players. I don't know that Graham Mertz gave him. A great recommendation. We asked about Jake Slaughter. He's like, dude, with a name like Slaughter, you've got to be good. Like, That's a little more. He was like, well, he's got a great mullet. And I'm like, okay. okay. Well, and apparently he can cook uh, really mm -hmm. well. That's true. Uh, and I know Iguacan None of those him. things have no? anything to do with blocking nose tackles or defense. And on his last us. name, too, we uh, Iguacan called him Slaughterhouse. I guess that's his uh, <laughs> that's his nickname. But look, he he might be ready. He might know this offense. He might be able to carry out his uh, assignments. But what's going to be new for him is playing in this. Yeah. Um, playing on the road, playing with four brand new offensive linemen. I know that they've been working in camp, um, but this this unit hasn't had a lot of time to gel. Mm -hmm. They haven't had games together where they've been through it. So, you know, you got a brand new starting quarterback and you've got all these new offensive linemen. And if Jake is in charge of all that, uh, that's a lot on his plate. So how he handles that, you know, getting those guys lined up, allowing Graham Mertz to settle in, and obviously that offensive line, being able to open holes for the run game is going to be key for Florida. On the defensive side, obviously you got the new defensive coordinator, but you got nine new starters now that we've got to see the depth chart this week, Nick. Um, obviously, what are your reactions, first of all, to some of those starters that were named and uh, a little, some, some surprises there with guys like Scooby Williams. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Jordan Castell stole the show. Uh, getting named a starter at safety as a true freshman. Um, but this is going to be a new look defense. Princely Uma Mielin and Jason Marshall are the only two returning starters playing at their spots that they were at. I think you gave him enough time. You gave him a trivia question. <laughs> I didn't want you to spoil it too soon. Um, it, it'll be interesting. I think Florida completely revamped and reshaped their defensive line. Last year, Gervon Dexter played nearly 700 snaps at 300 and 15, 20 pounds, whatever he weighed. Um, Desmond Watson played almost 400 snaps at 400 pounds. Uh, Florida just simply didn't have the depth. And when you look at the end of the Utah game last year, and guys were, and fans were clowning on Princely and clowning on Gervon for jogging, in their opinion, on, on some of the plays, I, I looked down at the play sheet and I'm like, that was, that was Gervon's 61st play. <laughs> He's probably a little tired. I think the biggest thing for Florida is that you have defensive line depth now mm -hmm. and you can kind of rotate guys keep them healthy the rump shaker our guy chris <laughs> rump said he learned at alabama those big guys have one gas tank you don't refill it at halftime when it's empty it's They're empty done. that's it they're done so i think florida is able to rotate the defensive line you've got a bunch of big bodies there it'll be interesting to see what chris mcclellan can do he was yeah. on the injury report yep. um, on monday night but he's, but he's one of those guys that that gets you in a rotation with Tyreek Sapp, who I think can bounce back and forth, yeah. in and out. Um, you're going to need some of the younger guys to step up, whether it's um, uh, TJ Searcy, whether it's Will Norman. Yeah. And if Chris McCollum can't go, then Will Norman. Yeah. Like, hey, you're, you're up, Kelby Collins. So I think Florida's defensive line is better. I think that they're deeper. 
that's the best thing for the cornerbacks and for the safeties. Sure. Uh, and then I think the biggest thing that popped up to me was Jordan Castell uh, getting a starting job, first game of his career. Billy said he calls it like he sees it, Nick. Calls like he sees it. It'll be Jordan and Miguel Mitchell. Zach's been on that hype train for a hot minute. <laughs> um, and then another one that was interesting to me was uh, just the – the team or at linebacker. It was almost, yeah. it was almost like uh, somebody walked into Jay Babin's office and was like, hey, we need the depth chart, and he wasn't ready. And he was just like <laughs> threw all the or, names or, and wrote or. Or in between a bunch of them. It was interesting to see Scoob Williams at Sam, um, your yeah. strong linebacker. Uh, and then inside, I think you're obviously going to get Shamar. And then I really thought Trahaja Mitchell was that that was just open and shut case. Uh, there was an or there with every Bingo, single yeah. <laughs> inside linebacker. So. Um, it'll be interesting. You know, the, the depth chart is Nick Saban didn't want to release one. Um, <laughs> some coaches don't want to, and uh, many coaches have said it's it's who's playing the last snap, who's playing the last sure, drive, sure. not not playing the first. And certainly, you could start a game and play five snaps, and your backup could play fifty five. Yeah. So we'll we'll have to see how those reps shake out, and and obviously this is the first game. Uh, the depth chart now will probably not be the depth chart no. uh, by the, you know Georgia. Yeah. at the end of October. And like you said, I mean, who's going to be on the field fourth quarter uh, at this game for Florida? Hopefully it's still on the line and they need some guys to, to make a play. So, um, you know, the final thing that we had as a storyline to watch uh, in our preview at Gators Online today, Tuesday, is, you know, look, there's a lot of things that you could pinpoint on the defensive side that Florida needs to do in this matchup. Obviously, uh, going up against Cam Rising, trying to rattle him and get pressure having to stop the run after all the yards that Utah gained on them last year, getting off the field on third down. But I think the one bugaboo that probably Florida fans, give Florida fans the most angst from last year's matchup is the tight end position. Well, and I thought you were going to say tackling. <laughs> well, you got to throw that in there too. Um, but it's not just rising, but it's their tight end. How do you pronounce his name, Grant? Grant Keithy. Keithy. So he's also coming off a torn ACL. You know, we, we've talked about it already on the Gators Online show. We would have thought that the timeline – uh, would have allowed him to already be cleared for sure, but Whittingham hasn't said for sure. But regardless, is if, if he plays as is expected, he's a problem. He's a problem. And you know, we mentioned those linebackers. I've, you know, based on some sources that I've talked to and, and just you know looking at his background, I really think Manny Nunnery is going to be a guy that needs to show up and make a difference in this game. They did not have a linebacker that could cover uh, Brandt last year, and I think Manny could potentially be one of those guys given his cover skills as a former safety at Houston. So um, Brandt's availability, uh, you know, and then obviously what he's able to do in the game, that's definitely going to be something to watch. And if Florida can do a better job defending him, because last season uh, he had a career high in this matchup with nine receptions, 105 yards, and a touchdown that he caught in the first quarter. So, um, and, I, and I blinked on his name, so I grabbed my phone to look it back up. Oh, Thomas. Thomas. Thomas Yasmin, former professional rugby player. <laughs> Gotta ask my boy Jeremy Croshaw if he knows him. Uh, six foot five, two fifty one. Uh, when Brant went down, he caught five touchdowns in the last six games for yeah. Utah last year. It's not just Brant Keithy; they've got a couple of talented guys. Uh, and then someone that uh, Florida fans are familiar with, and Mike Pittman, Michael Pittman, that's right. who came from Florida State. So uh, I'm really excited to see how Florida's secondary, because I think Jakeem Jackson will play. I think Devin Moore plays. I think. Obviously, Jason Marshall plays. Um, you're going to have so many opportunities for these young guys to get reps. Uh, and Devin Moore's a young guy. He played in five games, so he yeah. got a red shirt, but, Still under but wasn't healthy. Jalen Kimber's a guy who Corey Raymond has said is an NFL player. We had to watch him play with a club on his hand last <laughs> year. Um, so that's interesting. And then inside of Nickel, who is handling that? How does Darius Perkins and Jaden Hill, how did they match up? Yeah. Um, or... or does, is Utah able to scheme it so that you only have middle linebackers, inside linebackers on those tight ends? I would like to see. Because he beat everybody last listen, year. 6'5", 251, that's going to be a challenge for both Janarius Perkins uh, and, and Jaden Hill. Yeah, they're, they're going to need somebody at linebacker to step up. But like you said, there are going to be times where they try to match those guys yeah. up against the star or the safety, and uh, those guys are going to need to make plays. So uh, it will all go down Thursday night from right here in Rice Eccles Stadium. Uh, Nick and I cannot get Place enough cool. of this view. Uh, happy and, and shout out to all the folks here at Utah for allowing us to get early access to this press box and check it out. Uh, very hospitable and we'll be back with more videos this week to preview this game, give you our predictions and more. For Nick Del Torre, I'm Zach Appleberg.